Well, my vlog today is for all of you cowboys and cowgirls and fans of cow cowboys and cowgirls and for my mom, who's a diehard cowgirl who pretty much doesn't watch anything on TV or in the movies unless it's got a cowboy in it <laughs> or read any books that aren't about cowboys or the Old West. So she's kind of a fanatic. I guess that's where I get my fanaticism. Only I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a cemetery fanatic and she does not like cemeteries at all. The one exception, of course, is to see the grave sites of her favorite cowboys. So this one's for her. Hi friends, greetings from the graveyard. And thanks for joining me on another one of my road trips to the past to visit the famous, weird, unusual, and most interesting cemeteries, gravesites, memorials, and final resting places that I can find. I'm here at Wyatt Earp's grave. Finally made it. It's in the Hills of Eternity Cemetery here in Colma, California. Just south of San Francisco, in that direction there, beyond those hills there, that's the ocean. I don't even need to ask who's a fan of Wyatt Earp because pretty much everyone is. So the grave, the gravestone or headstone that you see right there is not the original. It's actually either the third or the fourth. The first three or four have been stolen. I mean, isn't that amazing? that in a cemetery like this, in a very public place, I didn't really notice. I noticed a lot of these uh, cemeteries do have gates, so you can't drive in, but I noticed that some of them up here in San Francisco, they don't have gates all the way around, which the, the ones down in LA, almost all of them that I've been to, have they're all gated. So you can't get in at night to steal grave st gravestones or whatever, <laughs> but uh, apparently, the story goes when he when he died his wife is Jewish so this is a Jewish cemetery she had him cremated and she had him secretly buried here I don't know if, if it's against customs now Norma from Las Vegas if you're watching I'm sure you'll probably know you always uh, fill me in on all the uh, the uh, details that I'm missing when it comes to especially uh, the Jewish cemeteries in fact, I think you're the one who told me that uh, his uh, wife was Jewish and that's why he was uh, buried here when a comment came up when I visited his brother or his brothers, James and Morgan, down in uh, San Bernardino. So, apparently his wife had him cremated, had him buried here secretly, and then when she died years later, Josephine Sarah Marcus, she died in 1944, he died in 1929, that she was buried. She's actually apparently buried here with his ashes. Now, the first headstone that she had placed after she died was a small little white uh, headstone. That was stolen. It was later recovered in somebody's backyard, I think. And uh, I think that's what I read. And it's now in the Colma Museum. Now, the two museums that are here, they're both closed today. And so, I was go I was going to go take a look at it, but uh, but they're closed. I'm here on a Sunday, so the uh, I guess they placed another one, and then that was stolen. And then the third one, I guess someone was trying to dig up his ashes. They couldn't find the ashes, and so they just stole the headstone. So I can't remember if that was the last one or if there was another one after that. But this one apparently is in cement, so that it cannot be stolen. So now when I got here, hi, were you guys here a minute ago? Yeah, we just she just. Needs Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna be here. I'm just doing a video and uh, okay. I'm sure I, I read that this is the most popular gravesite in the cemetery in the cemetery. Yes. <laughs> Have you guys been here before? No, we haven't. Okay. So that's what happens when you go to famous cemeteries. You usually run into lots of other people that are uh, visiting famous gravesites. So this family was here when I got here, and I guess uh, she forgot to take a picture with the, uh, the headstone. If you want to do more, feel free. I can come back. Oh, no, we're done. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, bye. So, yeah, so I didn't want to hog up uh, the, uh, the grave here. So I think that uh, this was a family with their kids, and the, the probably uh, it could even be a school uh, history lesson or something. So anyway, I thought that was pretty, 
pretty weird that this headstone's been stolen not only once, but three or four times. I wonder if there are any other famous people who have had their headstones stolen at all, and if so, multiple times. Do any of you know? Now, I don't know if you can hear all of the the fireworks in the background, at least I assume it's fireworks. It's been going on for probably, I would say, a good half hour. And it's coming from that direction. And so I, I think there's a, um, one of the many cemeteries here in Colma is a Chinese cemetery. And so I think they're probably, that's, I think if I remember right, that's part of their tradition is to, uh, to light uh, fireworks at a funeral or at a gravesite. At first it was weird because when I, coming to this cemetery, I passed a cop car who had blocked off and barricaded the road into the cemetery next door. And then I pulled up here and parked and all of a sudden I started hearing all of these, I thought it was gunfire. So I thought maybe there was something going on with gunfire, but it's been going on for so long, I think it has to be, at least I hope it's not gunfire. That's a lot, that would be a lot of gunfire. Hopefully it's just uh, fireworks in a nearby uh, Chinese uh, cemetery. Now, I mean, maybe it's not Chinese. Maybe I know it's a Greek cemetery. Maybe that's part of their custom. I really don't know all the different customs for the different uh, cemeteries. Okay, so at the very bottom of the street there, I don't know if you can see the flag flying. So that's the entrance. That's, um, I think it's, it's El Camino. It's Part of the street is Mission, and then it turns into El Camino. I think right in front of the cemetery, it's El Camino. So you just come in the gates. Boy, the uh, firecrackers, fireworks, I think it's probably firecrackers, are still just going off like crazy. So you come up, come up the street here until you reach this mausoleum here on the left, that palm tree, this mausoleum, C. Meyer. You can see this goes all the way up uh, to the next tree, which is Hillside. And then you come down this uh, walkway here. There are a couple of uh, streets where you can actually drive this direction as well, but you know, you can do, you can, you can do it either way. You can either drive to the other side, there's a street over there, and then it's actually much closer to that street. But just to show you how to find it from the front gate, it seems like it's just easier to come up to those two mausoleums, make a right, come down this walkway, and you're gonna go almost to the street. You, I don't know if you can see it there, it's right past that mausoleum is the the street where you can actually drive. You could park there, but you can see from right here, this is S Altmark, these steps here. So all of these have little steps going up to the, uh, the graves. And you can see Wyatt Earp's headstone right there. So you just take the steps up, And you're right here. I'll pan around so you can see a little bit more of the cemetery from Wyatt Earp's grave. And I really lucked out today. I got here on a beautiful sunny day. It was a little bit overcast uh, early this morning when I first got to the cemeteries, but Within an hour or so, the fog had burned off, and it's a gorgeous day, which I wasn't necessarily expecting being in South San Francisco and so close to the bay, which is foggy so often. Can you hear those fireworks? They really are loud. I don't know if the microphone is picking them up. But anyway, I wanted to uh, show you how to find his grip. I've seen a few people come and visit his grave, but I've never seen a video where they actually show you the rest of the cemetery 
and how to find his grave. So I want to do that in case uh, in case you're interested in finding. Now the, it does have a GPS. It it did actually lead me here in a roundabout way. wasn't uh, great, but it did bring me here. So whoever left the GPS, thank you. Otherwise, I don't think I would have found it at all. I mean, look how huge this is. I mean, it's not really a huge cemetery. It's probably a, a medium, medium to large cemetery, but there's so many stones and they all look very similar. I mean, you know, there's a variety, but there's so many of them. I, whoever found this, um, either they just lucked out or they really spent a lot of time trying. And I think everyone was, and I think they were probably motivated. Everyone seems to love white herb. I don't know if you can hear that, those fireworks, but man, it must be getting toward the end because it's uh, pretty loud. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. I doubt if it was even that loud at the OK Corral shootout. Kind of appropriate though. Look at that. Listen to that. I sure hope that's just fireworks and not gunshots. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you the uh, the whole story or the whole biography of uh, Wyatt Earp. I'm sure you probably already know if you're watching this. And if not, you can certainly watch the movies, read the books, watch the documentaries, read any number of articles online. He's one of the most famous uh, cowboys from the Old West. And um, But I will tell you a couple of interesting things. I, for me, I was wondering, it's like, well, how did he become so famous? When did that start? You know, he was, uh, it was back in the... Uh, what was it, 1848 to 1929? And in the 1800s, it's like, I, I was kind of curious, how do famous cowboys become famous after the fact? You know, where, where do these legends come from? Now he was part of the OK Corral shootout, but how did that become famous, you know? So I was reading about him and they were saying, I thought was really interesting, they said that he actually did a lot of self-promotion. He wanted to be well-known, he wanted to be famous, he wanted his story to be told, and uh, so he got to know some of the uh, screen cowboys that were very famous in his time. This was like mostly silent era uh, screen cowboys like um, William Hart and Tom Mix were two of the uh, screen way before my time. I know who they are, I've heard their names, and maybe my grandparents and my mom you know, knew who they were. My mom loves cowboys, so I'm sure she probably watched uh, their movies you know, back when, when she was just a, a little kid. And, uh, but he got to know, he got to know them, and you know, maybe he consulted on the movies with them and stuff. And uh, he tried to get his story told, and you know, nothing really came of it when he was alive, but when he died, they were two of the pallbearers. So he had these Hollywood connections, with two of the most famous screen cowboys of their time. I mean, they were like the, you know, the Roy Rogers and the uh, Gene Autry that came, you know, decades later. Then right after he died, someone wrote a bestseller called Wyatt Earp Frontier Marshal. That was published in 1931. And apparently, you know, when, after it became a best-selling book, that really put him on the map. And then from there, it just, the legend grew and grew and the movie started and more books and uh, more documentaries and the rest is history. So he actually got what he wanted posthumously. So he, fortunately, he never really got to, to uh, enjoy his fame. Doesn't Hills of Eternity sound like the perfect spot for a cowboy to be buried? To visit either the Home of Peace Cemetery or the Hills of Eternity Memorial Park, you enter through the same gate, but the Home of Peace Cemetery is located on the left-hand side of the main road that, that goes through the center of the park, and the Hills of Eternity Memorial Park is located on the right-hand side of the road. So it's pretty easy to find. They're both Jewish cemeteries. They're just separated by the road that goes between them. 
Wyatt Earp's final resting place is on the right-hand side in the Hills of Eternity, and almost in the same row, but just on the other side of the street in the Home of Peace, is the very grand mausoleum of Levi Strauss. I'll show you Levi Strauss's mausoleum and final resting place in a future video, but for today, I just wanted to visit the gravesite of Wyatt Earp. So as always, thanks for joining me today. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave a comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, you can do that down below as well. And I'll hope to see you on my next road trip to the past.